Hey guys, Uncommon Ramen here. Before I get into the video, let me remind you if you like my content, please hit that like and subscribe button so I can get those analytics up. And also, if you want to know when the videos are posting, hit that bell icon so you can be alerted when the content goes up. Uh, and if you feel the need to support me, hit me up on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Uncommon Ramen, capital U, capital R. I do all of this in my free time, so any amount of support can help me bring more of this content to you more often. And without further ado, we are going to take a look at another deck tech. Um, this time we are taking a look at a um, background pairing uh, that I did in a color pairing that I haven't built for at all before. Um, so this is going to be a new thing for me. I am running uh, an Orzov deck. So if you don't know what Orzov is, it is a black-white deck. Um, and we are pairing Lazel, uh, Vlakith's champion, with Agent of the Shadow Thieves. Okay, so we're going to jump into this deck tech really quick. Essentially what we're doing is plus one, plus one counters. And the reason behind that is because we have Lazel. Black Keith's champion. Uh, this is two and a white for a 3-3. Three, three. If you would put one or more counters on a creature or planeswalker you control or yourself, put that many plus one of the of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead. This is a really fantastic ability. Um, when we're talking about uh, planeswalkers, that means loyalty counters. When we're talking about uh, just in general counters, that includes shield counters and really just anything that creates counters, especially Aquaria stuff. Um, but obviously, plus one, plus one counters as well. Um, and then the uh, background that we're choosing here, uh, because uh, uh, Lazel does say choose a background, we're choosing Agent of the Shadow Thieves. This is one and a black. Uh, it's a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have... Whenever this creature attacks a player, if no opponent has more life than that player, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. It gains death touch and indestructible until end of turn. This is a super good background with this uh, with this commander because, first off, she is going to actually get two plus one, plus one counters as long as you're attacking the people with the highest life total at the table. Um, she's going to get death touch, which makes her really... Um, undesirable to block and she's going to get indestructible during that attack which means she's going to be much harder to remove from the table so this is going to be an orzov combination um i'm not the biggest fan of orzov in fact i actually um uh put orzov i rank orzov down with boros for me uh some of my least favorite color pairings um despite the fact that i've built quite a few uh boros decks uh it's just not my favorite color pairing so the next thing we're going to look at is the creatures. All right, and we're going to start out with Abzan Falconer. This is two and a white for a two three with Outlast. Uh, Outlast basically says you for this particular Outlast one white um, says that you can tap one white and this creature to put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. Um, you can only Outlast as a sorcery. And each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has flying. So first off, we get the outlast mechanic, which means that as long as Lazel's in play, instead of just putting one plus one, plus one counter, you're actually going to be putting two on him. And the other thing is that anything that has plus one, plus one counters now has flying. So we get some more evasion there, which makes this a really great card for this deck. Next up, we have Eo, the Dawn Sky. This is three and two white for a five, four flying vigilance. When Ao, the Dawn Sky, dies, choose one. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put any number of non-land permanent cards with total mana value four or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest onto the bottom of your library in a random order. Or you can put two plus one plus one counters on each permanent you control that's a creature or a vehicle. So again, we're going for the plus one plus one counters here. Um, this is going to put actually three counter plus one plus one counters on each creature that you have in play which is just a really big swing in your favor next up we have bastry's lieutenant this is three and a white for a three four vigilance protection from multicolored when bastry's lieutenant enters the battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control uh, whenever bastry's lieutenant or another creature you control dies if it had a plus one plus one counter on it you get to create a two two white knight creature token with vigilance so obviously one of the biggest reasons we have this in here is the plus one plus one counters. Um, on top of that, anything that dies that has a plus one plus one counter on it is going to create a knight. So we're going to kind of fill in the void where things die, um, albeit much lower power. 
Um, but the big, uh, another big reason this is in here is that it actually combos off with a couple pieces in here that will go infinite plus one plus one counters. So just I'll keep I'll I'll let you know when I get to them. Next up, we have Blood Tracker three in a black. This is a two two flying. You can pay a black and two life to put a plus one plus one counter on Blood Tracker. And when Blood Tracker leaves the battlefield, you get to draw a card for each plus one plus one counter on it. So we have a uh, desirable desirable ability for when it dies, because then we get to draw cards. It makes it less desirable for your opponent to block it. And for a price of one black and two life, you can put a plus one plus one counter on it. Um, and if Lazel's in play, that's actually two plus one plus one counters. So you're basically paying one life per plus one plus one counter, and that is really, really good. Next up, we have Breen of the Demagogue. This is one, a white and a black for a one three flying. Whenever a player attacks one of your opponents, if that opponent has more life than another of your opponents, that attacking player draws a card, and you put two plus one plus one counters on a creature you control. When they attack, they get to draw a card, and that's always a fantastic thing in Commander. Um, one of the big points to this uh, card is that it gets to put two plus one plus one counters on one of your creatures if they attack somebody that isn't you. And with Lazelle in play, that's three plus one plus encounters. Again, it creates a swing in your favor that is very good. Next up, we have Fane the Broker. This is two and a black for a three three. You can tap Fane the Broker and sacrifice a creature to put two plus one plus encounters on target creature. You can tap Fane the Broker and remove a counter from a, a creature you control to create a treasure token. Or you can tap Fane the Broker and sacrifice an artifact to create two. Uh, to create a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying, and you can tap 3 and a black to untap Fane the Broker. So he has a lot of really interesting um, abilities here. Um, this first ability with Lazel in play will be 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. You can remove counters from creatures um, so that you can create treasure tokens, which is really great. Especially with the number of plus 1 plus 1 counters that are going, going to be going around, this allows you to get a little bit extra value. And then you can sacrifice artifacts, so if you want to sacrifice the treasures, you can create two one inklings, and they kind of just cycle through each other. And you can always untap them. Just a really interesting utility for this deck. Next up we have Felissa, Fang of the Silver of, of Silverquill. It's two and a white and a black for a 3-2, it has Flying and Mentor. Mentor says whenever this creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. Uh, it also says whenever a non-token creature you control dies, if it had counters on it, create X tapped 2-1 white and black inkling creature tokens uh, with flying where X is the number of counters it had on it. So this is a phenomenal card in this deck. I actually shut out a game with this. Uh, when Lazel, at one point in time, I had a Lazel with, um, let's see, 12, 18, 22 counters on it. And it got killed while Felissa was in play. And that meant that I got 22 um, little 2-1 flying inklings, which basically at that point put the game uh, in my pocket. Not to mention she has Mentor, so if there's lesser power creatures... Um, does it say other creatures? Target attacking creature. So even if it, it could even target her. Um, it gets a plus one plus one counter, but again with Lazelle, it gets two plus one plus one counters. It's just a fantastic card. This is a must have in the deck. Next up, we have Grateful Apparition. This is one and a white for a one one flying. Whenever Grateful Apparition deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, you get to prol proliferate. Proliferate is great because it's not just plus one plus one counters. It is going to affect plus one plus one counters, which Lazelle will see, but it's also going to hit. Uh, loyalty counters, and it's also going to hit shield counters, which is something else that I use in here. Next up, we have Hagra Constrictor. This is two and a black for a zero zero. As Hagra Constrictor enters the battlefield, uh, it gets two plus one plus one counters. With Lazel, it'll be three. Uh, each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has menace. So this has a uh, similar effect as the Abzan Falconer. We're creating evasion. In this case, it's menace. With the Falconer, it was flying. Um, we're just trying to make sure that we can punch in with as many things uh, as often as possible. Next up, we have Hopeful Initiate. One white for a 1-2 with training. Uh, whenever this creature attacks with another creature with greater power, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. Um, which again, with Lazel will be two. Uh, two and a white, remove two plus one plus one counters from among creatures you control. 
to destroy target artifact or enchantment. So this is really great utility for artifact enchantment destruction. Um, there are going to be enough plus one plus one counters throughout the field that you can do this without really harming your board state too badly. Um, with the training ability and mentor ability that's going to be on the field as well, you will likely just recycle those counters anyway. Um, so at the end of the day, this is really good for uh, enchantment and artifact destruction. Next up, we have Intrepid Adversary. This is one and a white for three one lifelink. When Intrepid Adversary enters the battlefield, you may pay one and a white any number of times. When you pay this cost uh, one or more times, put that many Valor counters on Intrepid Adversary. Counter or Creatures you control get plus one, plus one for each Valor counter on Intrepid Adversary. So this is a really uh, flexible um, anthem. Uh, not only does um, the adversary come in with plus one of those valor tokens so you're getting one for free um it's giving plus one plus one to everything including itself so it's a really good anthem next up we have keleth sun uh sun main familiar this is one and a white for a one one whenever you're whenever a commander you control attacks put a plus one plus one counter on it and has partner um, the partner doesn't matter because we're not using it as a partner but um the plus one plus one counter does again with lazel uh as it hits play, it's going to see that and uh, get two plus some plus encounters. Next, we have Knight of the White Orchid. This is two white for a 2 2 first strike when Knight of the White Orchid enters the battlefield. If, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a planes card, put that onto the battlefield, and then shuffle. White has a problem with, uh, with ramp. And actually, to be honest with you, so does black. So this is one of few very, very good white ramp cards that you're going to need. Next up, we have Lisa, Forgotten Archangel. This is two, two white and a black for a four, five flying lifelink. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. Uh, this is in here as another really great utility card. Um, you are going to become a target very quickly. Um, that means your creatures are going to be dying very quickly. Lisa helps to uh, recycle some of those creatures because you are going to want to have some of these back, especially things like the uh, Hagra Constrictor or the Abzan Falconeer. Next up, we have Loyal Warhound. This is one in a white for a 3-1 Vigilance. Whenever Loyal Warhound enters the battlefield, and if, opponent, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you get to search your library for a basic planes, uh, put that onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Um, it's basically the same thing as the Knight of the White Orchid with different stats and a different casting cost. Next we have Luminarch Aspirant. One and a white for a 1-1 one, one at the beginning of combat on your turn. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. This is just an outright fantastic card. This is such a powerful card, especially with Lazelle, because we're putting two plus one, plus one counters instead of one, but just on its own is super good. Next up, we have Micaeus the Lunark. This is X and a white for a 0-0. Zero, zero. Micaeus the Lunark enters the battlefield with X plus one, plus one counters on it. Uh, you can tap him to put a plus one, plus one counter on him, or you can tap him to remove a plus one, plus one counter from him to put a plus one, plus one counter on each other creature you control. This is super powerful with Lazel. It's already powerful uh, on its own, but with Lazel, uh, it comes into play with an extra plus one, plus one counter, so you get one for free. When you tap it for plus one, plus one counters, you get two instead of one. When you remove a plus one, plus one counter, you get to put two plus one, plus one counters on each creature you control. That is super powerful in this deck. Albeit alone, this card is very powerful, but with Lazel, it's just an absolute powerhouse. Next up, we have Nightshade Harvester. This is three and a black for a 2-2. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, that player loses one life, and you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on Nightshade Harvester. This is already good um, because you get to punish your opponents for playing lands. But then on top of that, you get two plus one plus one counters as long as Lazel is in play, mean, meaning that this is going to grow very fast and it's going to require answers very quickly. Next up, we have Audrix Outrider. This is three and a white for a two four. When an Audrix Outrider or another creature you control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Just a really good way to uh, get value off the death of, of creatures. Next up, we have Shadrach Silverquill. This is three, a white and a black for a 2-5 flying double strike. 
At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may choose two. Each mode must target a different player. Target player creates a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. Target player draws a card and loses a life. And target player puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature they control. So this is obvious here that we want to target ourselves with the plus one plus one counter on each creature we control. Whether we have Lazelle in play or not, that's super powerful. But with Lazelle, we double down on it. And then it doesn't really matter which mode you choose other than that. Um, target player draws a card and loses life is really good. Um, though it gives them value, they lose a life, so that brings them uh, one step closer to death. You could also give them a 2-1 flyer. Um, really truthfully, you're going to have a lot of flyers and really big ones. So giving them one 2-1 flyer isn't necessarily a bad idea. Next we have Shale, Dean of Radiance. This is one and a white for a 1-1 one, one Flying Vigilance. You can tap it to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that entered the battlefield under your control this turn, which is super powerful. And then it has a double, double face side, so we're going to pull this off the camera real quick so I can flip around. We have Embrose, Dean of Shadow. This is two and two black for a 4-4. Four, four. You can tap him to put a plus one plus one counter on another target creature, then Embrose, uh, Dean of Shadows, and deal two damage to that creature. Oh, then Embrose, Dean of Shadows, deals two damage to that creature. Uh, whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it dies, you get to draw a card. So this, ha this side has a Skull Clampy effect, um, albeit not nearly as powerful. Um, if you, if you kill a creature that has a plus one plus one counter on it, you get to draw a card. So if you're in a bad spot, you get to draw a card. Um, otherwise you just play it for the white side, um, to give all your creatures plus one plus one, uh, and with Blazel double down on that. Next up, we have Skyclave Shadowcat. This is three and a black for a three, three. You can tap one and a black to sacrifice another creature to put a plus one plus one counter on Skyclave Shadowcat. Uh, and then whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it dies, you get to draw a card. Um, this is really cool with the number of tokens that we'll be creating. Um, you can sacrifice those inklings, and especially if they have plus one plus one counters on them, you get to draw cards and give uh, the Skyclave more power. Next up, we have Tawashi Guidebot. This is four for a 2-1. When Tawashi Guidebot enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. And for four, you can tap it to draw a card. This ability costs one less uh, to activate for each modified creature you control. And a modified creature is anything that has an equipment uh, or aura on it or a counter on it. So a plus one plus one counter counts as modified. Um, so that's a really good way to draw cards. Um, four to tap and draw isn't necessarily the best, but it's still a good way if you're in a tight spot. When it comes into play, it gives you a plus one, plus one counter, and with Lazelle, it doubles down. Next up, we have Victory's Envoy. This is three and two white for a 3-3. Three, three. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one, plus one counter on each other creature you control. So she's going to buff up everything that isn't herself, and with Lazelle, it doubles down. This is another piece of the Bastry's Lieutenant combo. So you need something that can sacrifice creatures. You need Bastry's Lieutenant in play. And you need Cathar's Crusade in play. And it will create infinite plus one plus one counters. Um, Viscera Seer is one black for a one one. You can sacrifice a creature to scry one. So not only are we actually going to create infinite plus one plus one counters. We're actually going to get infinite scry as well. And that is insanely powerful. Next up, we have Welcoming Vampire. This is two and a white for a two-three flying. Whenever one or more creature, one or more other creatures with power two or less enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. So it's a good card draw. Um, there's a lot of creatures in here that have two or less power, um, and it's just a fantastic body in general. And then finally, the last card we have in here is Yeheni, Undying Partisan. This is two and a black for a two-two haste. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you get to put a plus one plus encounter on Yaheni, Undying Partisan. You can sacrifice another creature, uh, and Yaheni gets indestructible until end of turn. Uh, this is just really powerful. Again, we're doubling down on the tokens. Um, 
sorry, the counters uh, whenever Lazelle's in play. So this can get really big really quickly. Uh, with the tokens that we're going to be creating, there's really no end to the amount of things you can sacrifice. Not to mention, you could sacrifice things just to draw cards uh, with like Skyclave Shadowcat and other things like that. Um, but also, if you sacrifice another creature, this outright gets indestructible. So it's very, very difficult to deal with. Okay, next up, we are going to take a look at instants. Okay. Starting with Asterion's Thirst. It's three and a black, exile target creature. Uh, you get to put X plus one plus one counters on a commander creature you control, where X is the power of the creature exiled this way. Uh, this is a really interesting card. Um, it's restricted by the fact that you need to have your commander in play. Um, but it does outright exile a, a creature. Um, so anything with indestructible can't hide from this. Um, so it is really fantastic removal as long as you have your commander in play. And again, with the plus one plus one counters, we're, we're going to get one extra on that. Next up, we have call of the, or call of the copper coats. This is two and a white, uh, it has strive. This spell costs one and one white more to cast for each target beyond the first Choose any number of target opponents. Uh, create X11 white human soldier creature tokens where X is the number of creatures those opponents control. So this again is a really fantastic card in here. Um, no, Lazelle will not see it and create an extra token. Uh, but what it does do is it, it basically gives you an instant board. Um, if your opponents are trying to go wide... Um, this is a great answer to that go wide strategy. Um, not to mention it gives you a whole bunch of tokens that you can use to sacrifice. So this is a phenomenal card. Next up we have closing statement. Three, a white and a black. This spell costs two less to cast during your end step. Destroy target creature or planeswalker you don't control. Put a plus one plus one encounter on up to one target creature you control. Um, so... You have to do this during your end step if you want it to cost one, basically the same amount as a uh, uh, utter end. But it's really cool because it hits a creature or a planeswalker, and on top of that, you get a plus one plus one counter. And I don't have to repeat myself on this whole Lazel double down thing. Next up, we have Contractual Safeguard. This is two and a white with an addendum. If you cast this spell during your main phase, you get to push a, put a shield counter on a creature you control. Um, you get to choose a kind of counter on a creature you control and put a counter of that kind on each other creature you control. So you can actually, if you cast this during your main phase, I believe it's your first main phase, right? During No, just any main phase. Okay. Um, if you cast this during your main phase, you can actually um, put double the amount of shield counters because of, of Lazelle on all of your creatures, which makes them indefinitely... Uh, indestructible, um, unless your opponents somehow manage to find a lot of answers or two board wipes at the same time. Um, but you can also just cast this as as instant speed on anybody's turn to get more plus one plus one counters, and again, Lazelle will see it. Next up, we have Path to Exile. One and a white exile target creature. Its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Next, we have Source Splash Shares, one white, uh, exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. Next, we have Unbounded Potential. This is one and a white. I get to choose one. Uh, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures or pro proliferate. Either way, this is a phenomenal card in this deck. Um, you can also entwine it for three and a white. So if you pay four and two white, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two creatures and then proliferate. Super good card. And then finally, we have Unbreakable Formation. Uh, creatures you control gain Indestructible until end of turn, and it has an addendum. If you cast the spell during your main phase, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on each of those creatures, and they gain Vigilance until end of turn. Super, super good, no matter how you play this. If you play it as an instant, you get to save your creatures from a board wipe. Uh, if you play it during your main phase, you get to double down on the value. Next up, we're going to take a look at sorceries. There's not a whole lot in the way of sorceries, mostly just board wipes, but starting with Bastry's Solidarity. One on a white, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Again, super good in this deck. 
Next up we have Damning Verdict. This is three and two white. Destroy all creatures with no counters on them. So this isn't going to hit every creature your opponent controls, but for the most part, it should guarantee not hitting your creatures. And that should put you at a distinct advantage. Next up, we have Exhilarating Elocution. This is two, a white, and a black. You get to put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. Other creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. So it's just really good value all around in this deck. Next up, we have Knight's Whisper, one and a white. You draw two cards and lose two life. Next up, we have Read the Bones, two and a black. Sorry, this is one and a black, not one and a white. Uh, two and a black, scry two, then draw two, then you lose two. And then finally, we have Slash the Ranks, three and two white. Destroy all creatures and planeswalkers except for commanders. Um, again, one of the biggest things we want to keep on the table is our commander. Um, so any way we can protect it, uh, we should do. Uh, this will put you at a pretty distinct advantage, unless, of course, your opponent is playing a very similar type of commander. All right, next, we're going to look at artifacts. Okay, first we got Arcane Signet. This is two. Uh, you can tap it to add one mana of your commander's color identity. It should be no surprise that this is going to be built somewhat like a Voltron deck. Um, we also have Armory of Eroes here. This is two uh, for an equipment. Whenever an equipped creature attacks, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on it, and it equips for two. Next up, we have Great Sword of Tear. This is one and a white. Whenever an equipped creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it and tap up to one target creature defending player controls. You can equip it for white. Um, this is really, really good. Um, not only are we getting that plus one, plus one counter, but we also get to tap down one of your opponent's def uh, uh, creatures that could possibly block. Um, I can't think of a better card. <laughs> Next up, we have Lion Sash. This is one and a white for an artifact creature equipment cat. Uh, it's a 1-1. One, one. Uh, you can pay one white to exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a permanent card, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on Lion Sash. Uh, the equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each plus one, plus one counter on Lion Sash, and it reconfigures for two. So this is a really phenomenal card because we're getting graveyard hate on top of plus one, plus one counters, so you can't, you just can't argue with it. It's just a really good card. Next we have Mask of Gristlebrand. This is one and two black equipped creature, has flying and lifelink. Whenever equipped creature dies... Uh, you may pay X life, where X is its power. If you do, draw X cards, and it equips for three. Um, I think this is their way of bringing out a Gristlebrand that isn't just straight out OP. Um, I still think this is a phenomenal card, especially in this deck. Um, we have lifelink and flying, so your opponents are going to want to kill it pretty quickly. And then, out of nowhere, you get to just pay life to draw X cards. That's really good. Super good value. Next up, we have Orzhov Signet. This is two. You can pay one and tap it to add white and black. Next, we have Ring of Thune. This is two. Equipped creature has Vigilance. At the beginning of your upkeep, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on equipped creature, and or if it is white, and it equips for one. Um, again, you're going to want to equip most likely your commander. Um, like I said, it has Voltron-esque feels to it. Um... But any, there are any number of white creatures in here you could equip this to that it would get value. And with Blazel and play, it doubles down on that. Next up, we have Soul Ring. You can uh, pay one for it. Um, it sorry, it, it costs one. You can tap it to add two. We have Swift Foot Boots. Uh, it costs two. You can equip a creature, uh, give it haste and hexproof. It equips for one. Next, we have Sword of Hours. This is two. Uh, whenever equipped creature attacks, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage, you get to roll a d12. If the result is greater than the damage dealt or the result is 12, you get to double the number of plus one plus one counters on the creature. It equips for two. Um, this is just a fantastic way to make sure you get a ton of counters really, really quickly. Next up, we have Talisman of Hierarchy. Cost two. You can tap it for colorless or you can tap it for white and black and take a damage. And then finally, in the artifacts, we have the Ozolith. Uh, one, 
whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, you get to put those counters on the Ozolith. And then at the beginning of your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you may move all of those counters from the Ozolith onto target creature. Um, this is self-explanatory. If your creatures die with plus one, plus one counters, you put it on here and then just put them back onto another creature later um, so that we're not losing value um, from board wipes and creature destruction. Uh, we're losing the creature, but we still get those plus one, plus one counters redistributed, and it's just really good. Okay, next up we're going to look at enchantments, starting with the final piece of the infinite plus one, plus one counters... Uh, an infinite scry combo. We got Cathar's Crusade here. Costs three and two white. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Um, so what is going to happen here is that you're going to use Viscera Seer to sacrifice, hopefully, a token. Bastry's Lieutenant is going to see that, and it's going to uh, create a, hopefully, a token with a plus one, plus one counter on it, I should say. Uh, Bastry's Lieutenant is going to see that, and it's going to um, create a 2-2 Knight, and that Knight is going to enter the battlefield, and when it enters the battlefield, uh, it's going to put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control because of Cathar's Crusade, and then you just repeat the process, sacrificing the Knight, and you do that infinite times, creating massive creatures and scrying infinite times. Um, so Cathar's Crusade... Viscera Seer and Bastard's Lieutenant. It is a three card combo, so it is rather hard to pull off, and it is even harder to keep protected, but if it does happen, it is deadly. Next we have Citadel Siege, two and two white as long, or as Citadel Siege enters the battlefield, you choose cons or dragons. If you choose cons at the beginning of combat on your turn, you get to put two plus one plus encounters on target creature you control. If you choose dragons at the beginning of combat on each opponent's turn, tap target creature that player controls. So it's versatile first off. Um, if it's early game and it seems like you need to create a huge amount of plus one plus encounters, which is what the deck is aimed to do, obviously you're gonna pick cons. Maybe late game you need a little bit more evasion or you want to keep tapping down something that is really big that could block you. Well, then you choose dragons. Either way, very good card. Next up, we have Felidar Retreat. This is three and a white uh, landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. You get to create a 2-2 two -two white cat beast creature token or you get to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Uh, those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. Obviously, we have this in here for the second ability, but don't, you know, shy away from the first ability, especially in the early game. Next up, we have Flaming Fist, two and a white for a legendary enchantment background. Commanders you control have, whenever this creature attacks, it gains double strike until end of turn. Um, this could be replaced with Duelist Heritage if you want um, I might have that in here. Uh, I might not have had an extra copy. Uh, but giving double strike to s massive creatures like this is just deadly. Next up, we have Gleam of Authority. It's one and a white enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each plus one, plus one counter on other creatures you control. Uh, enchanted creature has Vigilance and White Bolster 1. Uh, to bolster, you're going to choose a creature with the least toughness among creatures you control and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, I don't have to explain this. Uh, you're going to enchant something. It's going to become extremely big, and it has its own ability to make itself even bigger. And with Lazelle in play, that bolster mechanic will be doubled. Next up, we have Necrosynthesis. This is one and a black enchant creature. Uh, enchanted creature has whenever another creature... Uh, dies put a plus one plus one counter on this creature and whenever enchanted or when enchanted creature dies look at the top x cards of your library where x is its power put one of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order so you get to kind of stack well i guess you don't get to stack you get to look through your deck for something and put it in your hand so it's kind of like a tutor if it dies and it has a cool ability when creatures die where it gets plus one, plus one counters that Lazel sees. Next up, we have Resourceful Defense. Two and a white. Whenever a permanent you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on target permanent you control. 
Uh, you can pay four and a white to move any number of counters from target permanent you control to another target permanent you control. Um, so this is a much more versatile and much quicker Ozolith. Uh, it costs more, but you don't have to have the counters hit the Ozolith first and then get moved later. Um, they just get moved immediately. Also, for four and a white, you can move counters from one creature to another. So we can just start pushing them all onto one creature or distributing them the way you want to. This is insanely good value. Next up, we have Sigarda Summons. Four and two white creatures you control with plus one, plus one counters on them have a base power and toughness of four, four, have flying and are angels in addition to their other types. This can end games. This can outright be the end of a game because now we're taking these creatures that had small powers and toughness that now have a ton of counters on them and we're making them much bigger and we're giving them flying so uh this could be a game ender essentially next up we have sparring regimen two and a white when sparring regimen enters the battlefield you get to learn whenever you attack put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature and untap it so that is just incredible because it gives a pseudo vigilance um, to the creature. And on top of that, the plus one plus one counter that lays LCs. Just a really fantastic card. Learning says you can either uh, get a lesson or you can discard a card and draw a card. That's my bad. And then last of the enchantments we have together forever. This is two, uh, two white Whenever Together Forever enters the battlefield, you get to support two, so you get to put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. And then for one, you can choose target creature with a counter on it. When that creature dies this turn, return that card to its owner's hand. So you get to save your cards. Again, we're all about huge amounts of protection here. We want to protect our commander. We want to protect our creatures. We just want to protect our value. All right, next up, we're going to take a look at Planeswalkers, starting with Johnny, Adversary of Tyrants. This is two and two white. Um, his plus one is put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures that Lazel will see. His minus two is return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from the graveyard to the battlefield, which is super good. His minus seven is you get an emblem that says... At the beginning of your end step, you get to create three 1-1 one, one white cat creature tokens with lifelink. So even more tokens. Can't argue with that. Then finally, we have Basri Ket. This is one and two white. His plus one says, put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature. It gains indestructible until end of turn, which is a fantastic thing that Lazel will also see. His minus two is whenever one or more non-token creatures attack this turn, create that many 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. So again, we're creating a ton of tokens. And then finally, his minus six is you get an emblem with, at the beginning of combat, on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token, then put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Again, Lazel will see that. So it's just a phenomenal value engine. Next, we're going to take a look at non-basic lands. This is pretty simple. Caves of Koilos. This is a white-black pain land that can be tapped for colorless. We got Command Tower. You tap it to add one mana of your commander's color identity. We have Fabled Passage. It is a fetch land for basic, and um, if you have four or more lands in play, that land will enter the battlefield untapped. We've got the Shrine. This is a white-black uh, shock land that counts as a plains and a swamp. We have idyllic grange, uh, counts as a plains, enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more planes. Uh, when idyllic grange enters the battlefield untapped, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Just extra value. Isolated chapel. This is a white black check land. We've got Orzov basilica. This is a white black bounce land. Shattered Sanctum is another white black check land. Shine Shadow um, Snarl is a white black reveal land. And Tainted Field is a white black land that can tap for colorless um, and can only tap for colors if you have a swamp in play. 
And then finally, we got our basic lands. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen planes, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven swamps. Okay, so that is the deck tech. Uh, Lazel, Vlakith's champion. Uh, we're just trying to get the best value out of plus one, plus one counters that we can get. Uh, there is a ton of stuff in here to protect Vlaki or Lazel, Lazel and other creatures you control. Uh, there's tons of ways to get different plus one, plus one counters, uh, as well as other plus one or other types of counters. Um, so just a really interesting, fun deck that I put together. Um, yeah. That's it. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below, but let's keep it positive. I'll be removing any negative comments because we don't need that in here. And uh, that's it, guys. Until next time, peace.